फ्रेंड्स दिस इज राज साहू फ्रॉम क्राइस्ट फर्स्ट चर्च एट साउथ कैलिफोर्निया सिटी ऑफ लैंकास्टर आई वेलकम यू टू माय वीडियो दिस वीडियो इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वीडियो इन द सेंस दैट इस इट इज गोइंग टू आस्क आर टीचर्स पैस्टर्स एंड चर्चेस एंड एवरीबडी हु टॉक्स अबाउट सेड बाय ग्रेस अलोन थ्रू फेथ अलोन इन क्राइस्ट अलोन व्हिच हैज बीन द theme of our protestant church for many hundreds of years and which is so far so far from the truth jesus taught his doctrine but before we go into that i i always take the blessings of the lord or often times i won't say every time lest it be a lie lord bless me so i may speak your truth he gave me something right now <laughs> minutes or seconds before i started recording this video the thought i believe it came through the spirit is very clear that whenever a teacher whichever person i don't care which part of the world which church whoever teaches about jesus actually stands for jesus in his physical absence we are addressing whom the sheep of christ the church and he has great love for his sheep we should know that he told me very clearly if any of you even one teacher who stands on the podium the you know or uh, online or on the stage wherever you know pulpit if they are going to stray from the word they or you he told me it was a strong and staunch warning you are automatically condemned hmm. so guys whoever is watching this video understand that even teachers or people sharing like me sticking our neck out at the same time we are carrying the onus of speaking and sharing christ's truth and therefore it needs a careful examination of his words and clarity of heart thought rather and truth in the heart that we will not deceive we will not stray from the word but give you accurately as christ taught okay this i wanted to share with everybody who is teaching wherever especially churches we are standing in for christ in his physical absence and he is glaring at us not even staring are you in consistence with my word or not we have to be very careful guys that caveat aside for all of us i want to share today a simple question with our churches and i want to keep this less than 15 minutes i pulled out a lot of information regarding the teachings of jesus that how are we can we be saved if we are not friends of jesus christ can we yet be saved that is a question guys this has, is like an interactive kind of video i want you to participate brothers and sisters in christ and even others who love our lord or want to love or want to know how are we saved if we are not friends of jesus christ is the question and possibly i'm not decided the title but the title is likely going to be that can we be saved if we are not friends of jesus christ and it is based on what jesus you know staunchly and pretty strongly on the last day on the last supper really not the last day on the last supper where he had he broke the bread with his disciples and us that's why it's recorded so vividly in all four gospels and he earnestly reminded us few things i'm not using earnestly in a lighter manner it could be a stark warning also i'll leave it to you how you take it i take it as a warning a caveat jesus says i have mentioned this in couple of videos it needs to be mentioned because guys remember we are people like i marty corzad there's a lady called christy i believe there is del tondo there is 911 there are many now teachers online who are exposing the deceptions of the fake apostle paul right so it is very very important to get rid of this man from our perspective or our focus paul he had come with the express purpose to deceive and there's abundance of videos and evidence like damning evidence including his own uh, 
confessions like for example second corinthians 12 16 the crafty fellow that i paul am i took you in by deception i'm a liar he says in romans 3 7 he was lying to people to get them to god so why were you lying dude so many years after your so-called conversion even that conversion is fraught with inconsistency i've recorded all that please go through my videos it is not about Paul this video, but it is important to understand that he was deceiving us. Why, why, why is it important? So we may brush aside this man and then do what? Scrutinize, examine, understand what Jesus was teaching the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior of mankind who died on the cross. Paul did not die. No pastor of us died. Neither is Raj Sahu going to die. Nobody will die on the cross for us. It's only one man. So it's vital, crucial to understand what was he teaching and when will his grace which emits or emanates from the cross of the Christ, under what circumstance will it be imputed or applied to us so that we, our sins are forgiven and we are saved? When? How? This is what this is attempting, this video is attempting to answer. So please pay a lot of attention. I would want some feedback on this, even from Paulians, who are Paulians, the Paul lovers, who placed Jesus, uh, Paul before Jesus. Otherwise, there was no need. There's a direct conflict, direct contradiction between what churches teach and what Paul, uh, what Jesus Christ taught. I'll take advantage of this video and earnestly appeal to all churches that we, we are also Christians, the ones like me, Marty Corzad, Del Tondo. We are also very staunch Christians, but we do not accept Paul. So can we have a debate? I think the world now needs a debate. The world of Christ, Christian faith, Christianity needs a debate on a large scale, global scale, if you will, but with neutral jury. We don't want a bunch of Protestant church, Paul lovers to judge us or what we say. They will reject everything. We want neutral jury. I think 30 minutes will close, right, Marty? <laughs> right, Mr. Del Tondo? I, I haven't heard your because I couldn't find them online. But I have heard this gentleman, Mr. Del Tondo, has done some extensive research and very wonderfully explains the deceptions of all. I've done my bit, whatever I'm worth. I put my heart and soul into it. There's a lady called Christy, Sister Christy. I think three, four, five of us are enough or even more are invited. This brother... Beg your pardon, I forgot almost. Jose in Chile. That man has such deep knowledge about the deceptions of all this. Like, spent 20 years gathering it all together. And he explains it so well and articulates it, articulates it brilliantly. So four, five of us should be enough to get through with that debate. But I request the churches to have a debate with us. A respectable uh, debate filled with details from Bible supported by the words of Jesus Christ especially in Bible short of Paul so we can have a conclusive evidence that this man was a deceiver I think a neutral jury will in 30 or 40 minutes it can go up to 60 minutes will it'll finish off there's so much contradiction and remember guys what did Jesus say in John 13 16 keep these words in your mind he says, no messenger, I paraphrase, you check it out, John 13, 16. No server is greater than his master. No servant is greater than the master or a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Jesus is talking about Paul and others. I am greater than all that. He had to be. So please do not put Paul's words before Jesus. Jesus has warned, I will not accept that. Or do you want to go against Jesus, guys? All right. Now, all this being said, and this will help you understand the scope of uh, the juice of this message. Okay. Jesus wants, and I've put this a couple of times in my earlier videos, but it's important here. Can we be saved is the question without being a friend of Christ. And you will know in the next 15 minutes, can, can that happen? If you love me, keep my commands. Jesus wants us. John 14, 15. Now, this is the last supper going on. He, in hours, he will be crucified. He knows that. He knew everything, even the end of Bible. And the, what he will do after this project, earth ends and the hundred, few hundred thousands, there will be few who will be saved. I'm not, I'm not scaring you. That's what the Bible says. Many are invited, few are chosen. So he knows the whole thing as the project earth comes to an end. Father God will be walking out with, off with hundreds of thousands of children. He put two in the Garden of Eden. 
Now fast forward it to the last day, the book of Revelation, he'll be walking as the new Jerusalem comes and the bride of Christ and the lamb are married, that is his bride, is the ones who fought their sin, turned away from it and turned to love, practicing loving kindness as they traverse through their life. That's how you obey Jesus Christ in its entirety, fights and rejects him. Why is it, is it a big deal to learn to love? Because top commandments, four of them, I won't go into that, but check out Matthew 22, 37, 40, Matthew 7, 12. All of these top commands and in, in, he says even in, um, in the, the Sermon on the Mount that love even your enemy, bless those who curse you for there is no reward if you love only those who love you. Again and again he was talking about love God, love the fellow human being, love God, love the fellow human being, love everybody and he, that is what he is reminding here because now he will go to the cross. Remember as you watch this video, after this he is going to the cross and dying a horrible death, one of the worst deaths possible, painful to the to the hill and then he was raised and then he will come back second time to judge. So he was giving a grim reminder, if you love me, keep my commands, obey me, John 14, 15. Same words in John 14, 21. Same words in John 14, 23. Same words in John 14, 24 with a caveat. If you do not obey, you have no love for me. John 14, 24. So four times in John 14 at least. Let's go quickly to what does he say in John 15. Then he keeps on like he's hammering it in. He's pounding us with this these caveats. What does he say in John 15, 10? If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Like if you obey me. Now you know the churches have completely rejected obedience and scoffed at people like me. How much obedience is needed to be saved? Then what was Jesus teaching, friends? Why don't you attack Jesus on the last day? How much obedience do I need? Jesus, talk to him to be saved. Why do you teach us these things? They are so besotted. They are so controlled now by Paul, so intoxicated in the romance with this false apostle that they started rejecting Jesus left, right and center six times in John 14 and 15. Explain to me otherwise. This is very serious. We are trying to uh, shake them out of the stupor. The churches, the teachers, the pastors, what are you teaching? Why are you teaching in contradiction to Christ? And then yet... You keep telling people you're saved, saved, saved by what? Rejecting Jesus, right? Or explain, please. I, I'm a very transparent person. My uh, details of contact are mentioned. I live in the city of Lancaster, California. My church, Christ First, is already functioning in some way. On June 30th, it got established. One man effort. <laughs> I'm fighting and I'll fight till the last breath. I want answers. So what did he mean? John 15, again coming back to this important question. In John 15, 14, on the last supper, Jesus says, If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. If you. Because it's a covenant. Remember guys, what is a covenant? Covenant is an agreement. It is a contract between God and us. There are two parties, God the Father or Christ Jesus, the Son of God, face of God, John 10, 30 and us. Wanna be Christians, right? We are in contract, we are in an agreement, we are in a covenant which has exactly these kind of phrase of phrases of phraseology. If you keep, then it will be proved that you remain in my love, also else not. If you keep my commands, you remain in my love. As I have kept my father's command, and then he gives it draws an analogy that as I have kept, he obeyed. But we don't. Oh, Paul said, just saved by grace through faith. The grace is a word Jesus never taught that you will be saved by grace alone once. Not one version of Bible anywhere in the Bible mentions the word grace through the mouth of Christ. Why? Because he, he didn't teach all this saved by grace and all. Neither did he use on the day of judgment. We'll come down to that very quickly. And then Jesus, for the last time, 
like in my notes in john 15:14 he yet again makes a grim reminder he says christ in john 15:14 you are my friends if remember this if this conditional covenants are always coven, uh, conditional with bilateral responsibilities and obligations so he's reminding us because he's now going to die a horrendous death a painful a very very torturous death on the cross so he's making a, a grim a putting out grim reminders do this else it is proved you have no love for me he's saying that and not i so i'm asking the churches how are we saved if we are not friends of jesus based on john 15 14 to cap it all he's saying this you are my friends he's telling us you are my friends only if you obey what i command read out again you are my friends if you do what i command else not now guys enough of this uh, john 14 15 my question to you is can we be saved if we are not obeying jesus he saying very clearly you are my friends if now churches have not taught us in my stint of more than 15 years in the churches they never said that it is based on works or obedience and they even mocked me how much obedience is needed rash to be saved look at how the evil paul took over the churches so all this words become worthless right he was blowing jesus our poor lord was blowing hot air he was teaching undoable things by their cha- their, their standards right so my question is very simple can we be saved guys if we are rejecting jesus like he says you are my friends he says you cannot be my friends unless you obey me so can we be friends is is a question to you just as another reminder guys i took some other stuff out uh, like in matthew 12:50 and mark 3:35 jesus again is saying the same thing pay attention guys in mark 3:35 jesus reminds us or issues a grim reminder a warning if you will who's my brother who's my sister whoever does god's will is my brother sister and mother i'm not saying he say mark 335 matthew 1250 check it out he's saying very clearly i have nothing to do with you guys if you are not going to do the will of god now you understood what the will of god is keep the commandments you have to add all all of it God will always point at Christ remember that that's why he said if you love me keep my commands now he is reminding us that was the will of God do the obey obey Jesus Christ is the will of God okay i'll put a video on all this i'll put it all together but here also you getting it very clearly there should be no doubt we have to keep the commandments of Christ Jesus and that suffices that need or is enough to meet the demand of God that nobody will be saved unless we do the will of god as he says jesus christ says in matthew 7:21 and mark 3:35 and matthew 12:50 repeatedly saying we have to learn to do will as he did you know jesus says i never do anything of my will but always the will of the father who sent me why is jesus doing that because we cannot exceed god's will we, unless we are we walk in god's will or are consistent with god's will he does not want us get that guys it is very important to understand the basics of bible which we have been denied because they were so besotted our church with paul a oh, belief or oh, believe and go to heaven what do you do in heaven all kinds of nasty flock of people will go there who don't do anything except believing who are, don't have any desire to do any good any love in their heart not all some of them they will spend an eternity with god who is love <laughs> right god is love first john 4 8 first john 4 16 260 times in unfailing love in book of psalms his love 
what does he do with haters who believed in Jesus and got saved? Saved like this. <laughs> per Paul. Think about all that, guys. Again, going further here, remember this, guys, when Jesus is saying that, if you love me, keep my commands and you're not my friend if you do not love me. Remember the man also said this. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And do not do what I say. He's the same man who's saying this. That I am not your Lord. If you are not going to obey me. Luke 6, 46. All this was rejected by the way. By our churches. This is very serious as we come to the last stage of this world. Project Earth as I call it. It's going to end. Then Father God will walk off with hundreds of thousands who obeyed him. Practice loving kindness. That is the deal. Became good Samaritans. That is the deal. That is where you get saved. That's where you are on safety in safe safe area. And you practice loving compassion. When you live your life as a good Samaritan, an altruist who has feelings, concerns, empathy, love kind, and kindness for others, unconditional, you love or be kind. If you can't love, you have kindness in your heart, concern in your heart for others as Jesus had. He is the premier. He is the greatest good Samaritan ever. And God wants to see Jesus in you through your works, through your actions, through your deeds, through the fruit of your life. Then once we reflect Jesus, the good Samaritan, the ultimate good Samaritan, Father God wants us. And there is a scene there. That's clinching evidence. This is not created. It was all there. Matthew 25, 31, 46, the last day, judgment day, vision, where Jesus gives, was kind enough, loving enough to tell us in advance. This is how it's going to play out word for word, blow by blow account he gives. And this vision was of Jesus Christ was rejected yet again by our churches. It's Matthew 25, 31, 46. It's also called the goats and sheep uh, judgment day vision. Check it out guys. I won't say because I say in every other it has gone unnoticed or a better word would be ignored. It was ignored ruthlessly by our churches guys. Again, I will remind you of Matthew 24, 35 where Jesus issues a st stern caveat Heavens and earth will pass, but my words will never pass. So when he says, you're not my friends, if you're not willing to keep my commands, if you love me, keep my commands. When he was saying it repeatedly, pounding on us, he was not blowing hot air. It is all going to happen because the heavens and earth will pass, but not one of my words will ever pass away. He should he issued, Jesus Christ issued a stern warning in Matthew 24, 35. See, it all adds up. We have, if we love Jesus, we have to keep his commands. We are not his friends if we are not keeping his commands. If you have something else to say, guys, do it. But rather than uh, debating with me, I think you should leave everything and do what Jesus says. Otherwise, he'll tell you, why do you call me Lord, Lord and do not do what I tell you. See, it's very serious. But thousand billion trillion times serious will be the day of judgment when jesus will reject left right and center all who did not obey him then you will remember what this servant of christ i'm a very lowly servant of christ that's it it ends there my introduction that's all i am then you'll remember what i had said i'm just quoting christ i'm obsessed with that man's words so I quote Jesus very, very liberally. And I'm not that liberal with Paul's words. That man was a deceiver. He was a snake. There was a snake in Old Testament in the Garden of Eden. Nobody asked what is this snake doing in the Garden of Eden. Father God planted for his two firstborns or created Adam and Eve, his children, our ancestors. What was the snake doing there? Satan, who's depicted as a snake. Would you like to put a snake where you make a little garden for your children? Certainly not. But that's how Jesus, God is different than us. He says, my ways and thoughts are different than yours. 
dramatically different, infinitely different. We cannot compare our thoughts to Jesus or to Father God. The snake was placed there in form of uh, the Satan was allowed, permitted to test if Adam and Eve are, Eve are willing to obey or not. Similarly, this snake Paul from whose eyes scales fell off. See, even Paul was giving abundant clues. Why the heck would he say I'm a crafty deceiver come to deceive you? Took you trapped you the church in by deception second corinthians 12 16 or i am a liar these are the crafty deceiver liar stealer these are words which define satan why is paul telling us even paul was telling us don't trust me i am a deceiver he was giving us abundant clues yet we chose to believe this why you know why the only thing i can think of think of is we didn't want to obey first and we were greedy for salvation without any effort, effortless, free gift, free gift of salvation. Then what is all this? Jesus is saying, if you love me, keep my commands. Guys, with that, I would, I think I've shared abundance of uh, information pertaining to this subject in this uh, video. If you have anything, please uh, let me know through uh, a respectful debate. And another thing I wanted to say is that, see brothers and sisters who are fighting for, uh, to exp uh, expose Paul, I'm very grateful to you from the bottom of my heart. I thank you. And the, the ones who are encouraging our uh, viewers, I'm just saying our, I hate to even use the word I. So it's a collective effort, even if we are not directly collaborating, yet we are collaborating for the Lord. However, friends, whoever are teaching about the deception of Paul, which is quintessential, which is absolutely important to expose, how else will we concentrate on the words of Jesus? We'll keep getting, you know, blocked and obscured through Pauline deceptions. It is very important to expose. That being said, we are not yet saved. It is half the battle won. What is the remaining half? We yet have to follow, what, be obedient to Christ. Otherwise, I'm afraid it's back to square one. We have to know what was his salvation doctrine. All right, I've, I've put some videos on that and I'm trying to uh, help each other understand it is equally important to understand what was the doctrine of salvation of Jesus Christ and when will that grace which emanates, that crucial grace which wipes out the remaining of our sins after we turn away from sin and turn to loving kindness. You're getting a, a lot here, hopefully, praise the Lord. It was about practicing loving kindness and becoming good Samaritan as Jesus. That is all that is was the message. I want you to examine the red lettered words of Jesus. Why is all this effort to teach all this? To take you away from the deception of Paul and take you to what? The actual genuine pristine doctrine of Christ which is also simultaneously existing in the Bible nobody was paying attention because of this Pauline deception and the obsession of the church is they're getting besotted with this uh, with not with Christ but with this snake Paul from whose <laughs> eyes the you know scales fell off he was saying I'm a snake don't you see I'm the same guy as my father Satan in uh, was in the garden of Eden he gave abundant clues and confessed a lot about himself. Everything was rejected because of that mad obsession, desire, greed to somehow get saved by doing nothing but believing as if he was a fire insurance. It's not the case, guys. Thank you for watching my videos. I would like to end this because I can't pepper you with too much information. Try to examine all this I have mentioned in the in this video. Read John 14, 15 a few times in those verses in Matthew and other places, Mark 3, 35, at, uh, pointed at to help you understand it is abundantly important, it is crucially important that we turn away from sin and do the will of God by obeying Jesus Christ. Thank you guys for watching my video. I bless you and your families abundantly. May the Blessings and the mercies of Christ Jesus and his wisdom come upon you and your family. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.